the fifth ISTE standards for students is to become a computational thinker. What is computational thinking? I honestly think the title is kind of misleading. It has nothing to do with computer sciences. It's a problem solving process or a thinking process for problem solving that kind of resembles how you would solve problems in computer programming. There's a lot of overlap with scientific research process and in your thinking process you will go through these nine steps. So these nine steps are meant to aid you with logical thinking for scientific research and problem solving. And since we're living in the 21st century in a digital age, we're not just trying to think logically, but we're trying to make the process more efficient by using technology or digital media. So this is what computational thinking is about. It's not like learning about computer science or computer programming language. Data collection is a process of gathering appropriate information. Data analysis is making sense of data, finding patterns, and drawing conclusions. Data representation is depicting and organizing data in appropriate graphs, charts, words, or images. Problem decomposition is breaking down tasks into smaller, manageable parts. Abstraction is reducing complexity to define main idea. Algorithms and procedures is a series of order of steps taken to solve a problem or achieve some end. Automation is having computers or machine do repetitive or tedious tasks. Simulation is a representation or model of a process. Simulation also involves running experiments using models. And finally, parallelization is organized resources to simultaneously carry out tasks to reach a common goal. So now let's take a look at each step a little bit more in detail. Our focus here is that we're trying to implement computational thinking into our lesson in a classroom setting. It doesn't matter what subject area you teach or what you teach. Logical and scientific approach to problem solving is important and useful. Some of the projects in our class, such as School Technology Survey, Teacher Innovation, Digital Age Classroom 3, they all require computational thinking or problem solving process. In our class, you are trying to learn how to integrate technology into teaching, learning, and classroom setting. So when you go out to visit a school and interview teachers and people, you might see a problem with the technology integration in a school, classroom, or instruction. And to solve that problem, you will begin with data collection. What's important here is that the problem needs to be formulated or defined in a way that will help you focus on appropriate data gathering. So I'm going to give you an example. To make it easier for you to understand this example, I will keep it simple. So suppose there's a smart board in a classroom, but the teacher wasn't using it. We know smart board can be a very useful tool for teaching and learning, so we will identify it as a problem. So in the data collection phase, we will try to collect data that might explain why the smart board is not used in the classroom. There could be many different reasons. To collect data, you can ask the teacher why the teacher is not using it. Or you can also inspect how the smart board is set up in the classroom. You can examine if the smart board itself is working. You can also check the software to run the smart board. You can also check the sound system. You can also ask other people, such as technology specialists. You can also ask students what they think about the smart board. You can even ask the principal about what the school thinks about the smart board used in the classroom. Maybe they're trying to fade away from smart board and moving on to something else. Who knows? You can also ask other teachers about the smart board use, how often they use. You can also check the computer that's running the smart board software. So there are a lot of things you can check and examine. Once you have enough data collected, you need to analyze the data. So the data, data analysis phase, you would try to make sense of what those data mean, how they might contribute to the problem. When you gather data though, you have to have the analysis phase already in mind so that you'll be collecting the useful data that you can use for analysis later. If the number is going to be important, then collect the numbers for sure. Just asking about how they feel, that might not be useful. It probably doesn't explain the real reason for not using a smart board in the classroom. You need something more substantial and concrete. So now that you have analyzed the data, you need to be able to depict and organize what you have collected and analyzed in appropriate graphs, charts, words, or images. For example, whether other teachers are using the smart board or not, that can be a data. It can be a graph, chart. Your interview results could be summarized as a table or graph or chart. So a collection of vast amount of data is not useful unless they are organized and formatted in, in a way that people can understand. So at this point, I think you have identified uh, several major factors leading to not using the smart board in the classroom. And in this case, probably the complex problem exists leading to the underuse of the smart board. The problem can be technological, 
the hardware and software may be not working properly and the budget could be part of it. There's no budget to fix or upgrade them. So the problem could be administrative. The problem could be the teacher. That could be about just the perception or attitude or it could be the skill level of the teacher. And the problem could be also be the support system for teachers' professional development. So you will need to break down the problems into smaller problems. Obviously, they're not all the same problems. The problem can be multifaceted. By the way, I just did the abstraction phase as well. I was breaking down the complex problem into smaller problems, and I was just talking about the main idea for each problem. In other words, I abstracted the complex problem. Teacher might be reluctant with using the smart board for many different reasons. We can talk on and on and on about you know, why, you know, what are the reasons, why they are reluctant using the smart board, what the reasons are. But in this phase, you know, we also need to abstract, reduce those complex ideas to define main ideas. And that's what I just did. The next step is algorithms and procedures phase. Uh, what we're trying to do here is not about computer science or anything like that. We're trying to simply, you are simply creating a sequence or procedure for achieving a goal or tackling a problem. So in this case, you know, if you're trying to implement a smart board into a classroom lesson, you might have to think about the process of designing and developing a smart board lesson. And if you're trying to tackle the financial problem for getting it up to date or fixing it, you will have to know the process of getting funds and, and planning for budget. If the problem was about professional development, you again have to know the process of organizing the professional development and, or organizing the professional development program. And in the automation phase, there are a lot of things that can be automated. For example, using a spreadsheet you can automate certain tasks of you know, organizing and analyzing data or creating a graph, a charts and table and if the necessary data and information are on a school database or district database then getting access to them can automate certain tasks and in a simulation phase you can create representations or models to demonstrate the process you can create a spreadsheet to simulate the budgeting and funding if the physical setup in the classroom was a problem you can create a floor plan for the improved smart board setup in the classroom you can also create a simple flyer or infographic to show and explain the needs for the professional development clearly. In the parallelization phase, all the problems are identified, are tackled, and we, we know exactly what needs to be done. And since we have multiple problems to be tackled, now we need to organize resources to simultaneously carry out the task to solve the problem and reach the common goal of integrating the smart board into classroom learning. Some people might be working on the budget, some people could be working on the professional development program, and some people could be working on the physical setup in the classroom and so on so that's what the computational thinking is about if you have scientific mind it will come natural to you well the bottom line is in a simplest way it is to think logically based on the facts and evidence